Now, if this invading pathogen really wanted to kickstart a ruckus in the human body, the first line of defense would be what we call the innate immune system. That consists of indiscriminate, non-specific lines of defense that are made up of five different components. Very excited to be reacting to Cells at Work for the first time, requested by many of you, including Goro Akechi deserves better. I'm gonna give you my insight as a doctor working in London. What? I'm loving the concept of this anime already with the dendrites sweeping up and the very interesting factoid of the 37 trillion cells in the human body. What's even crazier is that for every cell that we have, there are 10 microorganisms on our body and the majority help us with essential functions like manufacturing vitamins, digesting food and fighting off infection. That's why we hate giving out unnecessary antibiotics because it's like sending your troops out to the battle field then indiscriminately bombing it. Not a great idea. Speaking of our own troops, they showed the dendritic cell sweeping there, which was a brilliant visual representation of its function. It seems the translation under the text wasn't quite accurate as it said dendrite, which is actually one of the arms of an axon's body, which doesn't match the picture. The dendritic cell captures invading pathogens and then after eating them, takes up their antigens, which are basically like their fingerprints, and then holds them up on a protein on top of the cell to present to other cells starting an immune chain. That's why they're called an antigen presenting cell. So absolutely loving this so far. <laughs> The way they've personified the cells is such a good way to learn about science. One of the problems with science is it can seem scary and complicated with all the long Latin words. Part of what I want to do with this channel is make health and science simple to help people get interested in how their bodies work in a fun, engaging way. Seems like the creators of Cells at Work had a pretty similar idea. That does have a flip side though in what Shara and colleagues published in a very interesting 2021 article describing the easiness effect. Basically a series of experiments were performed that showed when non-experts have access to simplified information on a topic, they're more likely to feel that they don't need to refer to an expert for advice on a particular problem. That itself can be damaging as it can lead to a false sense of security based on a simplified explanation when the truth is actually more complex and nuanced to communicate. Let's see how that plays out here. Oh, looks like introduce the villain. Now I know at the bottom it said a vascular endothelial cell, which is actually a very useful cell, helps maintain the lining of the arteries and veins. I think what they mean is that this invading pathogen is some kind of bacteria. Maybe they were referring to all the broken rubble as the endothelial cell, as this invading pathogen breaks through. Kind of looks like Mewtwo when he's in an incubator with the wires all hooked up. Now if this invading pathogen really wanted to kickstart a ruckus in the human body, the first line of defense would be what we call the innate immune system. So that consists of indiscriminate, non-specific lines of defense that are made up of five different components. First, you've got the barrier, like the skin and mucosa. Then you've got effector cells like the dendritic cells, which we discussed earlier, natural killer cells that eat up the invading pathogens and sound the alarms. Another component is antimicrobial peptides, which can basically skewer invading pathogens like a javelin. Another component is soluble mediators like cytokines and proteins. And lastly, you've got cellular receptors that can trigger a cascade and sound the alarm. So it's not gonna be easy for this germ to stick around long unless he's got a plan. But you, I can see why they've personified it. It does seem a bit warlike. Just waiting for the topless Spartans to come in now. Oh, 
Whoa, you 1146 coming in here with the heroic save as a neutrophil. Mechanism of killing here should technically be consuming the pathogen whole, but I can understand how it would be tough to carry on making him seem like the good guy while doing that. And come on, Samurai Sword is gonna be more visually interesting to watch. The other thing is the walkie-talkie. I love the detail here as these first responder cells actually communicate with one another in the body using those soluble mediators we spoke about earlier, like cytokines. That can help bring in different parts of the immune system for a full-scale defense. <laughs> This is so well written. Love how she's just bouncing around in the wrong places trying to drop her CO2 at the lungs so she can pick up more oxygen. I mean, that's pretty much how it happens in the body except without screaming lymph cops. Will also be interesting to see what happens with this surprise bacteria now. Maybe it's mutated with some defense mechanism against the white blood cell or it just gets slaughtered instantly again. But here's a question for you smart people. What percentage of blood is made up from red cells? Bonus points if you get what the other parts are made up from as well. Answers down below. Streptococcus pneumoniae, also known as pneumococcus, common cause of pneumonia, sepsis and meningitis and has a capsule which can act as a magic cloak, protecting the bacteria from toxic compounds. It's almost like a slime layer and can help the bacteria stick to things like the lining of the lungs or the meninges. So people who've had a splenectomy are much more vulnerable to encapsulated organisms because they don't have those densely packed immune units that the blood has to filter through. So patients who've had their spleen removed need long-term antibiotics and a vaccine against this kind of organism so that they prevent illness. He has no excuse, he's clean shaven. Do you know the work involved in keeping this face crumb free? It seems like the bacteria is running rampant across the body and causing a bacteremia, which is basically when the bacteria enters the blood. That can be quite dangerous as it can disperse to many organs in the blood. One of the complications is septic shock, which can lead to death in 30 to 40% of cases. Signs and symptoms you'd see include drowsiness, fever, confusion, low blood pressure. We treat it using the sepsis six, so give three, take three away. Give fluids, oxygen, and antibiotics. Take away a blood gas for lactate, blood cultures, and a urine output. When I first qualified, that was 90% of my job when I was on call for medicine. I remember one time there was a 73 year old male patient with sepsis and heart failure. For them, you have to be very careful with how much fluid you give as you can easily tip them into overload. I gave 250 mils and his blood pressure improved, but his breathing got a lot worse. We had to really finally balance his treatment, but he pulled through in the end, thankfully. Now, if you're enjoying this video and would like access to some exclusive perks, check out the channel membership. Not only does it help me a lot, but you also get priority suggestions on what I react to series and episode, as well as early access to new videos. For a limited time only, the first 30 members will be in with a chance of winning a one-on-one -on -one two to session with me on a medical topic of your choice. Currently we have 10 members so make sure to secure your spot so you're in with the chance of winning that and future giveaways. The earlier you join the earlier I can also react to your suggestions so press the join link down below. <laughs> Look who put the toxic in cytotoxic! Seems like they didn't teach the manners in Marrow training camp. Although these guys look pretty badass. Now previously the guy with the samurai sword was the white blood cell, neutrophils which are part of the innate immune system. Now things are getting more serious and are targeted via the adaptive immune system. As I was alluding to earlier, the antigen presenting cell in the body ingests the pathogen, breaks them down and that protein is held on something called MHC class 2 on the cell surface or major histocompatibility complex. The helper T cells have a special receptor made to detect that and that would be Commander Crumbface there on screen. In the body we also call him a CD4 T cell 
as they're very important to also sound the alarm and create cytokines that activate other cells and help coordinate antibody responsiveness. That's why the HIV virus is so dangerous as it targets and it depletes the CD4 counts. The army guys are the CD8 cells and they detect the MHC1 class, which is present in all the body cells. The job of the CD8 cell is to discover the body's own cells that have been contaminated with a virus or another pathogen through that MHC1 complex and then destroy them. That's also how the body fights cancers as well. So the way this is all set out and personified really stays true to the science. I'm loving this. In the box. He was in the box. Now the nucleus is the cell's brain, so you don't need me to tell you that red cells don't have one. Now I mentioned earlier that this pathogen's name is Streptococcus pneumoniae. Scientists can be pretty dumb when naming things like Sonic the Hedgehog gene. But thankfully this name makes sense as strepto means chain, coccus means round, and pneumonia means causing pneumonia. So it actually makes sense. As is shown in this series, he likes being in the lungs and that's why they're the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia. They're gram positive, which means they actually stain purple when exposed to the gram stain. And you can see he's purple. The storyline also fits as pneumococcus is an alpha hemolytic organism that releases hydrogen peroxide to break down blood cells and utilize their nutrients. Some crazy attention to detail here. <laughs> Interesting, so they couldn't kill the pneumococcus and the bronchial tubes due to that slimy capsule we were talking about earlier. So they had to retreat to the respiratory mucosa, which protect the lungs using specialized cells. Goblet cells in the body secrete mucus, which paralyzes the pathogens, and then ciliated cells brush that mucus upwards so it can be removed. Each epithelial cell has around 200 cilia, which are these finger-like projections that beat up and down 10 to 20 times per second, like a raver on meth. Bye bye, Kinder. <laughs> that last bit needed no translation. <laughs> bye bye is bye bye. No matter where you are, whoever made this anime is a genius. Such a unique concept that helps to teach about science but still keeps a fun storyline that's going on, although can be a little bit predictable at times, especially if you know the science. So I'd say 7.5 out of 10 for entertainment, 3 out of 10 for diagnosis, but that's not really what it's set up for, and 9 out of 10 for accuracy. That's the highest accuracy rating I've given anything I've reviewed. Now it's my turn to diagnose you. Looks like you've got a medical reaction deficiency. Oh look, the cures are over here. Treat yourself. Stay curious, stay nucleated.